this is the Fire and the Kids official review about Skankfest, right? Their official review. And it's an interesting review. Very, very interesting review um, about their time over there at Skankfest and how they felt and what they liked and what they didn't like and blah, 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 blah. So let me see if I can get it up on here on the screen. Actual, how do you actually, can't you make it, doesn't it go full size? Okay, it probably doesn't. Cool, it doesn't matter. So let's just get this going here. Bear with me a second as I get it going. Dish, 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 boom. So that's it on the screen. You can see it, right? So this is them talking about their time at Skankfest and a little review. So let's see what they had to say regarding their experience at Skank, Skank, Skank Skanky Fest. So with Skankfest, a lot of people were like, oh, they're going to cancel or something like that. Brian's flying out of New York because he had a show. I, but just to stop it there. I love how he's trying to act like they're going to cancel like they never cancel. Brendan is the serial canceller of shows. He always cancels shows. His own comedy club shows last minute all the time. There's a running joke on the Fire and the Kids subreddit about, especially ones he does in Spokane and a few other places, he always cancels them. There's a theory going around now that's been peddled by Unique that he essentially is booking and hiring these clubs himself to play at. They're not actually booking him, which might explain why even though he gets cancel shows last minute at these clubs he always still plays again at the clubs because i know from my time um being a dj and putting on events um usually when you don't perform well or when you don't sell tickets at a certain venue they don't invite you back it kind of you kind of burn that opportunity which is why there's a lot of pressure in making sure that that event is a success because you want to get reinvited or have the option to be booked again so the fact that he keeps getting booked at places that he cancels last minute might lend to the theory from unique that he's maybe booking these comedy gigs with his own money. He's basically hiring a club, playing at it, and then seeing what happens there. So him saying that, oh, it's not, we don't really cancel, bruv, you cancel everything. Look at the fucking UK Euro tour. We still haven't got an explanation as to why he canceled that. And I paid for the ticket. I just got my refund actually recently, but I paid for a ticket to see him perform in London and he canceled that two weeks before, no explanation. Then the explanation he did give was that, oh, I'm here, I want to stay here to to help my my 10-year-old son become a professional baseball player. Like, what? Thursday night in New York. New York has torrential downpour. Oh, I mean, like flash, flash, Shane Gillis flash, couldn't flash. get out. Yeah. And when you, uh, you know, you always, sometimes you lie about being late and you're like, hey, dude, I might not make it. All I'm like, time. oh, hell no. So yeah. I figured you were lying. Imagine him, imagine someone like Brendan accusing you of lying straight up at that on the pod imagine if brian said the same thing to this is the thing that's probably one of the main issues people have with brendan it's okay to say this about brian but imagine his reaction if brian tried to say the same thing about him just imagine how he would react if brian tried to say the same thing about him on air hey you know how you always lie about things about the people that you meet and stuff you know you know how you always lie about them about people that you see in elevators, about people that say they're big fans. You know how you always lie about your shows and how much sold you, tickets that you've sold and stuff. And to send a video. I'm sending you and Luis Gomez video. Of the engine died on the, the plane. The engine died on the plane. I, I got on one, I had to buy three tickets. Anyway. I text Brian and go, dude, if you don't come, this is gonna look so. Also, only Brian Callen would go to, I would love to know, why was Brian Callen in New York on the day before to go to fucking Skankfest in Las Vegas? Maybe Las Vegas is next to New York. Yeah, it is, is, right? If I'm not mistaken. Isn't Las, no, Las Vegas is on the other side. It's on the West Coast. I want to talk about it. It's nowhere near New York. So why was he in fucking New York? Standard Brian Callen, you know, just, just I think that's a, one of the tendencies of people that grow up rich. They don't really have a, nothing is ever really, uh, there's no really stress. You know what I mean? It's just kind of la di -di, skips around through life. Balance, you have got to get I her. get there. Any of you start running. I run, I run on stage. Originally, 10, the 20. show was supposed to be at eight. You get there at. And imagine also, please keep this in mind, right? Brendan has to now be. Brendan already was worried about going Skankfest. He was already said it out of his own chest. He never wanted to go. No, sorry. Never. He was scared of going. He took his big brother to fucking Skankfest because he was afraid of getting beaten up by trolls, which is hilarious because he's a former fucking UFC fighter, a, basically a trained killer with his bare hands, elbows, knees, legs, and whatever else, right? He can strangle you to death being a fucking black belt in jujitsu. Maybe not legit black belt, but still, he's better than most of us that are watching fucking this fucking stream. He definitely killed me with his bare hands and he's afraid of going. He takes his big brother there. He's already in a place that he doesn't want to be at around people that he doesn't really know. And now his friend who is meant to be there, or his co-host is meant to be there with him, is not going to be there in time. So he has to 
twiddle his thumbs and try to make friends with people that don't really like him he knows deep down how people are in comedy they probably speak bad about him behind the scenes they probably you know bad mouth him to other people in different green rooms and shit and he's having to now try to be friend and be awkward around them it's like waiting for your friend at a train station they tell you they're gonna arrive at fucking 10 you're there at fucking 9 55 and they come at maybe 11 you have to just sit there on your own or like at a party they invited you to but then they come late and you have to get there early on your own you have to make friends with people he's not even a good friend do you know what i mean just get there on time man help your friend out bro like fucking hell 10 o'clock yeah and we're supposed to go live at 10 they switch it to 10 so then we and then we hit the stage at 10 20. Yeah. it was I'm, chaos. I'm gonna say this about the skank fest fans and the skank fest thing you walk into the belly of the beast and you can tell me you can you can counter this if you want the nicest group of people and the and comedy fans just there to laugh and support i was i don't like this this whole like sucking up of the skank fest because the skank fest fans because they were decent normal courteous kind people to you in public like what did you expect was going to happen and also does doesn't this clearly show you the issues that these guys have they're so coddled they're so in a bubble with their own fans or with their own type of people that they hang around with they've never actually been around regular comedy fans that don't uh, that aren't attached with their flipping bapper verse jre verse group of fucking content creators and podcasters and stuff that's what it basically shows they haven't really been around regular people so when they get around quote unquote regular fans they're suddenly shocked that they're nice that they're kind that they're cool that they're respectful that they're funny that they make you feel good whatever it may be it's like come on bro that says more about you guys like why don't you hang around with regular fans all day dude like and you got there late did I, you have I, any I was negative at, interaction I, I got there at, all i got there at one o'clock and i was just doing spots at z i mean zero yeah zero just great <laughs> zero obviously i was scared to go in there just because people are mean you don't know i brought jay <laughs> can you imagine saying this with your big chest this is the thing i don't understand about this guy he wants to be the victim and the bully there's times when he's threatened people online who said things about him with violence but and i think it goes for anybody if it's a hater if it's you know a youtuber talking shit you can do that you can criticize my comedy my podcasting skills whatever but if you go personal and i see you in the street well well there's gonna be repercussions that's the way the world should work you just can't fire off at the mouth and not expect consequences. That's how it should work. When you're dealing with outliers, that's how it should work. <laughs> I agree, though. But, oh, it's such a meathead angle. No, it's not. It's the non-bitch angle. It's the non-bitch. Society's too soft, man. There has to be repercussions for your actions. I dare you say that to my face. You wouldn't say that to my face. I do this, I do this, I do that. Even threatened physical violence of fucking Ariel Hawani because he fucking destroyed him with words. I didn't do anything. You're, you're acting little, very innocent. Little right me? Now. You're not little all you right now. Little you're, me? You're, you're being mischievous. Here, here's, here's my it whole thing with the, if you want to squash the beef, whatever, if he has beef, that's fine. I dare you. I did, 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 did. Bam, 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 bam. dare you. Come on the show. You won't talk like this in my face. Or I'll, I'll fly to New York. Dude, come on. Come on. Stop looking lost. But then the other points, that's not nice. Hand on the chest. People are mean. People say mean words about him on social media or on Reddit about the dumb things. That, again, think about this clearly. I know that subreddit can be, a very to can be a very toxic place. I know people can go sometimes a little bit too far. But at essence, that subreddit only exists because this guy's a redact. If he stops being redacted, that subreddit dies. But if he continues being redacted, guess what? He keeps pouring more fucking fuel on the fucking fire. So all he has to do is be self-aware to recognize why people don't like him, maybe adjust his personality a little bit, make some changes, and that subreddit disappears. But the lack of introspection, the lack of self-awareness is what actually makes him the perfect locale and the perfect person should just point and laugh at because he's never going to get it. He never understands why people don't like him. He thinks everybody's mean for no reason because he's a beast of a guy, beast of a dad, beast of a husband, beast of a fighter, beast of a podcaster, all this nonsense. And he doesn't understand why some people generally have a dislike to him and his personality and the things that he's said and done over the years. He doesn't get it, which is why 
he will forever be a locale because he has no self-awareness. Zero. People are mean. Bro, you're a former UFC fighter, bro. Logan Paul and Jake Paul, I think, are stars and super successful despite not being the best human beings because I think they notice what great, like the top level content creators notice. They know why you laugh at them. They know why you troll them, but they don't give a fuck. But they're not unaware of why you don't do it. And some of them, like a Jake Paul, he actually doubles down on the things that you don't like about him. He actually leans into, like a Dylan Dennis is a good example of it. He's aware of why people don't like him on social media and he leans into it for his own good. But he's not unaware. He just doesn't care that you don't like him for the things that he does. Whereas Brendan has this assertion in his head that he's a great human being. It's like, all of us know we're pieces of shit, myself included. We all know we're pieces of shit, but we try to do the best that we can. We don't delude ourselves in thinking we're the best person ever because we're not. But these guys do because what? They do podcasts. <laughs> we weren't selling merch no. so jay was there just in case things popped off so i had somebody have my back i didn't know if i was gonna get stabbed shanked shot they, we didn't need any of that Jesus they were great Christ. can you imagine how pathetic you have to be to think a bunch of comedy fans of especially legion of skanks fans who are just regular people who like to get a bit crazy love a bit of drugs love a bit of drinking love some debauchery love some fucking around some pranks and shit that they were the ones that were going to physically harm you a trained UFC fighter. Again, this trying to gain sympathy through being a victim thing is so pathetic. Great. What 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 Lewis J. Gomez built and those boys at Legion Skank nuts. But they're also nuts. good. Like when we had them on stage, I I was like, oh, I can just sit back and let Dave Smith and Lewis and and Yeah, because remember that how in how much of a backhand insult is that? You think only West Coast guys can do to, can podcast? Only you guys can get on stage or get on in front of camera, in front of microphones and ramble about nonsense out of your ass. Anybody can do this. Look at me. I'm a nobody. Even I'm doing it in my mom's basement, covered with my fingers covered in Cheeto dust. So anybody can do it. The fact that these guys were surprised that people that they don't know that well could podcast as good as they can is hilarious. And also, please note that podcast was terrible. That's all they Big do. J. They do live podcasts every week. <sighs> so good. They're they're monsters. Really it was so much good. fun. It was great. It was great. And it's different than any other comedy festival because most of them are like really networky and corporate and like Netflix is there, Comedy Central. Yeah. Which ones have you been to, Brendan? Can you please name them? Please, please name the podcast festivals you've been to. I mean, sorry, comedy festivals you've been to. Why is he doing this, Phil? Again, I think this is the pathological lie thing because why would you lie about the amount of comedy festivals you've been to? Who gives a fuck? Is that really important? Is that really going to move the needle? Is that really going to be a difference maker that you went to comedy festivals? All of them that I've been to. Which one have you been to? Moon Tower. The one that you lied about headlining because your name was at the top because you won the first ones that have been announced. And then you wouldn't admit that you lied about being the headliner and then you dropped out of it at lastminute.com. Why are you lying about being at a fucking comedy festival? why so this everyone's is, a little this uptight this was all comics and just a dope hang it was run ran really great you did well on that uh comedy on the spot where you were you had to improv oh yeah 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 that was, was fun good. with you, jeremiah you and, you and jeremiah yeah were that was great. fun that was a good google time. me it was just but, cool just getting up doing a bunch of spots and then then you go to the green room and just the hang like we used to do back in the day yep, yep. it was just such a good energy everyone was dope everyone was great it's such a it was crazy man, it was crazy man man they come out man they come out in droves those boys built something special i'm so glad i went isn't this a little bit condescending please am i am i bugging out about this isn't this a little bit condescending because they went to a comedy festival that regular people go to that aren't their fans they were amazed that it was good that it was fun that people were kind and chill like what did you expect do you only want people to fucking suck you off? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, I don't, this is so odd, man. It could, this tells you everything about how insular their lives must be. They must be in such a fucking bubble. It's so weird, bro. Even in comedy terms. I'm not telling them they should go to fucking a dive bar and go and hang out with guys on a construction site. No, even in the comedy terms. They are in such a fucking bubble that Skankfest fans were like, wow, regular people are awesome. 
I'm really so did. glad I they went. Did, they did build something special. Those are great comedy fans. At the end of the day, that that's the kind of fans that you want. They're there, and anything goes. They're just they're just they're open to whatever you want to give them. And then we so the podcast we did with Legion of Skanks, the live podcast, the it might come out. I, th I would assume it comes out on the the Legion of uh, Skanks network, and then but they're sending us the file too. So we'll release it as a regular episode on this audio and video as usual. And I'm sure they're going to do their thing, but that everyone will be able to see that. Yep, it was woohoo, so much fun. Where you punched Lewis again? Th th I don't want any of this. I don't want to do you and Lewis. They're always like, man, you should see Brandon twist this guy's I'm head off. Egging you on. Yeah, Lewis figured out. He's like, no, you do want to hit people. He definitely, 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 definitely wants to punch Unique. And I'm sure if you saw BGL, he would definitely, he would definitely give BGL a double leg. I love this whole idea that he's this passive, friendly giant guy. Nah, always be wary of people who protest too much. I'm a great guy. I'm a good guy. I wouldn't hurt a fly. I wouldn't touch anybody. Blah, 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 blah. Look what happened to Crystalia. You thought Crystalia was a was was a chill dude. Then look what happened. We found out about him. No vices, by the way. Also, make sure you keep that in mind. Never trust a man without advice. But any person that tries to always say, "Oh, I'm a great guy. I would never hurt a fly." For sure, if he cross paths with B, if he ever has to cross paths with BGL, or he cross paths with Unique, he would cave their heads in, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. So yeah, come on, I don't believe you in the slightest. That's why you get so much hate. You don't brag. He bragged for you. Uh -huh. like, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. You do brag. You brag all the time, bro. Have you seen your Instagram? And again, not to get your wife involved. Have you seen your wife's Instagram? You don't brag. All of Brian's, all of Brendan's cars he's ever owned on on the internet, every single one, every single car that Brendan has owned, you can see on the internet. You brag all the time, bro. You post your shoes on your Instagram stories every day. By the way, a lot of them are fake because I buy reps myself, so I can spot them. But come on, bro, <laughs> you don't brag. Push things. Like yeah, that. I like to, I like to stir the old hornets. See who I told you? He definitely played the role of being the cuck so that everybody could hate on him and take the attention away from Brendan. Expertly played by, by Brian, by the way, because like I said, he knows where his bread is buttered. He has alimony to pay and he has a new family to look after. So he did what he needed to do. But don't think Brian was doing that, you know, on purpose, like it, naturally. He was doing that to protect his boy, Brendan. Stop. Yeah, but you yeah. don't get stung, just I do. <laughs> Oops, that must sting. Put some stuff on it. And Lewis was like, punch me as hard as you can. And he's wearing this like silk shirt. And I was like, I don't want to do this, dude. But I can't give him just a, you know, so I have to. So I punch him. I hit him hard. Hold on, hold on. Is he saying he didn't punch Lewis Shea correctly because he was wearing a silk shirt? Is he saying his punches was deflected, slipped because Lewis Shea Gomez's shirt was silk? No way is he saying that. Is that what he's saying? <laughs> okay. But because his shirt was so slippery, it ricochets off his bicep and hit him. hits him right in the tit. And he goes, ow, <laughs> ow. <laughs> this is a, exactly golden gloves, allegedly a UFC top 15 heavyweight, jujitsu black belt, nothing a double leg couldn't sort out, couldn't punch a comedian sitting down wearing a silk shirt without it. Instead of punching him in the arm, he punched him inside of his chest. He couldn't accurately punch him. And he was like, what? arms length away from him <laughs> he the, the way he lies is just incredible he can't even honestly narcissism is a um that's one of the one things I'm, I'm happy i think i have a tendency to be a little bit what's that wing called i have a tendency to people please i think that's why sometimes i can look at brian callen and be a bit disgusted because i feel like i got i have the tendency to be that person also to try to get people to like me. I remember doing that a lot when I used to party a lot. I'd always be the person trying to share my drugs to everybody, right? Like always trying to be the drug person. Like, hey, share, have this, have this, so I could have friends and stuff. It's really pathetic. So I probably see a lot of that in me. But one thing I know that I'm happy that I don't have is narcissism. That ability to never see yourself in the wrong and to always excuse your actions and to always think you are right and to always think you're the victim and you're the hero in every story. I'm so happy I don't have it because I couldn't imagine going through life making an excuse that the guy, the reason why I didn't punch a guy in the shoulder and punch him in his chest instead was because he was wearing a silk shirt. <laughs>
I was like, I'm sorry, dude, you're in silk, bud. I, I, it's, you know, when you look at Dave Smith and Big J, what, what I, this is what was so interesting. I realize I've been in LA for too long. They're just smoking, probably Marlboro Reds. They're like, can't guys, guys. Pussies. I know, I haven't Shut seen up. a cigarette for, and when they were well, doing just, it, I, in my head, I'm like, oh, they're naughty. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. In my, when I was like, oh, we're smoking, ooh, they're naughty. Ooh. Yeah, I was like, <sighs> that's probably the saddest thing ever, right? They're never even around regular people who smoke cigarettes smoking cigarette is equivalent to being a man's man that's being the opposite of being a soy boy because they smoke cigarettes again maybe i'm a bit spoiled because in europe everybody fucking smells cigarettes everybody smells sm smells and smokes smells like cigarettes and smokes cigarettes so maybe i'm a little bit whatever but fucking hell bro really really anyway that was a reaction from then about being at Skankfest, courtesy of the Fire and the Kid guys. They had a blast. They had a good time. They got treated with fucking kid gloves, as we expected. Um, as I said before, um, I've always felt like anyway, all those guys on the East Coast, as much as they love to rip into Brian and Brendan, some of it probably was... Um, it did come from a real place. I feel like a lot of it just came because they're kind of jealous that they're not in the same positions. That's what I felt like. I feel like a lot of these guys don't really have an issue with Brendan's behavior or his, you know, um, accession in the comedy scene and maybe some unfair opportunities that he's got and whatever it may be. I don't think they give a fuck about that. They've just worried and they're just annoyed that it wasn't them. So it's no surprise whenever they get in front of these guys and they're actually on pods and stuff, they never keep the same energy. So it was never going to be what people thought it was going to be. I don't think what I don't know what people thought it was going to be, whether it's going to be like a roast session of Brendan. That was wasn't going to happen. But I think ever since Louis J. Gay, Louis Gay, Louis J. Gomez made the effort to try to be a bit more nice to Brendan on online and shit, you could see what was happening in real time. And then soon after, he went on Rogan again when he hadn't been on there for ages. And every time you know Big J. Gerson tried to bring his name up, Rogan would be really cutty about cutting him off and shit, and clearly made it clear that he wasn't a fan of his. It was no surprise that as soon as he made nice with Brendan, he suddenly got back on Rogan and then Brendan's over there at Skankfest. So obviously there is way more career and whatever stuff linked to why these guys are all friends again now, which is what it is. But at least these guys are happy with the appearance. I think in a good way, it's fine that they were, they were around regular people again and not just around their own sycophant fans and shit. That's probably a good thing. But again, it's probably quite depressing as well that these guys are so coddled they're so um, in their own bubble that the first time that they see people smoking cigarettes in the comedy club is when they go to fucking Las Vegas for the com for that Skankfest thing. Very odd. Very, very odd and very strange. But again, not surprising in the slightest.